When you think of evil, what does it look like? Let me rephrase. When you were a child and you thought of the boogeyman or the devil, what did he look like? I can't say that I ever had time to think about it because some of my first memories are of playing with Masters of the Universe figures and looking at the many comic books that came with them. Long before an afternoon cartoon series was put on the air, Mattel's Masters of the Universe was in full swing on the toy shelves of every department store, and kids could not get enough of them. He-Man was the strong force of good, and to balance the world of Eternia was the Lord of Destruction himself, Skeletor. Evil personified. He was the arch enemy of He-Man, who seemed to only want one thing. Everything. In some of the tiny comics, Skeletor stole Tila, the beautiful woman who at the time may or may not have been He-Man's girlfriend, or Man-at-Arms' daughter, or the sorceress. They were still figuring it out. In others, he wanted Castle Grayskull, the main landmark of Eternia, and place it on the toy shelves in most 80s kids' bedrooms. Sometimes, Skeletor wanted a key or staff or magical potion. Sometimes, he just wanted to kill He-Man once and for all. He was a masterstroke of a villain because his motivations were limitless. His quest was never-ending. Whether he got what he wanted or not, he always wanted more. And He-Man would always be there to stop him, even though Skeletor might drop him in a pit or freeze him with his magic first. But when you look at him, really look at him, you see that he is terrifying. Before any linear backstory came along, and it would be many years before one did, Skeletor was a blue-skinned man with claw feet and a skull for a face that was somehow still living and breathing. In the many comics that were packaged with the figures, it was said that Skeletor was originally from another dimension, populated by others of his kind, and he was thrown from his world into Eternia during the Great Wars by an opening in the dimensional wall. Originally, Skeletor sought the power of Castle Grayskull in order to return to his world, but ultimately, his storyline and motivations began to revolve around gaining ultimate power and becoming the master of the universe. For many years, fans of Masters of the Universe would look up to their mini comics, VHS tapes, or books to delight in the stories of He-Man, Skeletor, and the vast arrays of colorful characters. When creator Mark Taylor originally designed Skeletor, the story goes that Skeletor used to be a handsome, normal-looking human, just like He-Man. Skeletor plotted to take over the castle from the king, but he was thrown in the Well of Souls inside Castle Grayskull. In the well, the creatures and animals ripped all the skin off his face and made him aware of magic the hard way. Once Skeletor got out of the Well of Souls, he was a deformed superhuman. Standing at 6'4 and weighing 290 pounds, he had heightened senses, much like He-Man, but he also had an extra sense. He could detect the weakness in any opponent and use it to his advantage. In this new form, he had three toes and ridges protruding from his forearms. He had a skull for a face and glowing eyes. The eyes glowed when he was angry, which was most of the time. As he emerged from the well, he made a hood for himself to cover his glowing eyes and distinctive silhouette. This was made from the eyelid of a dragon that tried to kill him when he got out of the well. His armor was tougher than steel, made from an armadillo monster that tried to defy him. His intellect was immeasurable, off the charts. But he was also the ultimate bipolar, going from quiet malevolence to towering rage, a rage that hinders his true intellect. Skeletor's voice sounded like he was speaking from the bottom of a well. Also, it was said that Skeletor 
never slept. His plans always focused on the castle. Destruction and inflicting pain were his joy, with self-titled Lord of Destruction as his moniker. Skeletor used magic, but He-Man never did. Skeletor could animate anything and go anywhere. According to Mark Taylor, in my mind, that was one of the main differences between the main characters and their followers. So when Lou Scheimer and Filmation Studios began producing the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe cartoon series in the 80s, Skeletor was depicted as a former pupil of Hordak a high-ranking commander of the evil Horde. When Hordak invaded Eternia and kidnapped one of King Randor and Queen Marlena's twin babies from the palace, Man-at-Arms and the Royal Guard captured his apprentice, Skeletor, and forced him to divulge the whereabouts of his master, who had retreated to his base of operations, Snake Mountain. When cornered, Hordak escaped to the planet Etheria with the baby, Princess Adora in his possession. Skeletor remained on Eternia, gathered an army of powerful minions, including Beastman, Triclops, Trapjaw, and Evil Lynn, and took over Snake Mountain. In the series, Skeletor continues his efforts to rule Eternia and take over Castle Grayskull. However, his minions constantly fail him, and he considers himself surrounded by buffoons, possibly with the exception of Evil Lynn. Skeletor's popularity continued to grow, and the Masters of the Universe toys continued to sell, which meant the mythology over at Mattel was still being added to. None of the writers seemed happy to throw out the origins, but some seemed fine to include some of the new material from the cartoon series, including Prince Adam, King Randor, and the Sorceress. In these later mini-comics by Mattel, it is hinted that Skeletor is, in fact, King Randor's long-lost brother, Keldor. This contradicts both earlier comics and the cartoon series. The 1986 mini-comic, entitled The Search for Keldor, involves Prince Adam and King Randor searching for Randor's lost brother, Keldor. When Skeletor learns of their quest, he muses that they must never discover the secret of Keldor, as the truth will lead to his own destruction. In this story, King Randor announces that Keldor disappeared years ago. He thought the master magic. When his experiments went wrong, he was lost in a dimension beyond time. One of the few elements of Skeletor's backstory that remains consistent throughout the various continuities is that he had come to Eternia from another dimension. It is likely that Randor's statement about Keldor disappearing to another dimension is an attempt to reconcile Skeletor being He-Man's uncle with his extra Eternian origins. To find out what happened to Kildor, Randor and the Sorceress attempt to peer through a space-time rift that opens once every year. Randor announces, I think I see Kildor, or is it? Before he can see anything else, Skeletor appears, determined to stop them from finding out any more. Although Skeletor is defeated, he is able to prevent Randor from discovering Kildor's fate as the rift once again closes for another year. Skeletor's frantic effort to cover up what happened to Keldor, combined with the fact that Keldor vanished to another dimension when attempting to become a master sorcerer, is taken as a heavy implication that the two characters are indeed one and the same. Unfortunately, because the original Masters of the Universe toy line came to an end before the story could be resolved, it was never fully disclosed if this was officially intended to be the case. Stephen Grant, the writer for hire of the mini-comic in question, stated in a He-Man.org interview that, As far as I remember, Keldor was Skeletor, but I don't think that he was ever going to be revealed. I seem to remember it as one of those things Mattel came up with out of the blue. Keldor and you end up with Skeletor, his backstory wasn't ever really worked out. Some sort of evil cosmic energies altered him. I think they were going for a Darth Vader thing, but it was a tack on. The main idea was that if they found out Skeletor was Keldor, they'd be able to find out what had changed him and might find some way to reverse it. 
the depiction of the character in the 1987 Masters of the Universe live action film was far darker and more menacing than his comical animated counterpart, serving as both a competent and threatening antagonist to the heroes. During the course of the movie, Skeletor captures Castle Grayskull and imprisons the sorceress. He later absorbs the power of the Great Eye and transforms into a golden demonic god, but is ultimately thrown off a cliff into a vat of unknown substance by He-Man. In a post credit scene, Skeletor emerges from the vat proclaiming, I'll be back. The new adventures of He-Man depicted Skeletor as a funnier character and his design was far different than most fans were willing to accept, and Masters of the Universe disappeared for a few years. In the 2002 animated series, Skeletor's original name was Keldor, of Gar descent. His appearance as such is shown, and his exploits partially depicted. His relation to King Randor appears to be as a half-brother, with them both sharing the same mother. In this series, his evil is unleashed, and he is truly a powerful villain for the ages. In the Masters of the Universe Classics toy line, further character development was introduced and solidified in an attempt to create a new coherent continuity. According to the revised backstory, Keldor is Randor's half-brother. Keldor's mother was a member of the Gar race, and he was ousted from the royal council due to his Gar heritage. He roamed Eternia for knowledge, eventually learning the dark arts from Hordak. He then sought to unite Eternia by ruling it himself and battled his own half-brother with his army of fellow misfits. After losing the battle and desperate to survive, he turned to his mentor Hordak, who merged Keldor with an entity known as the Demo Man. Together, they form Skeletor. In the 2012 comics published by DC, Skeletor now knows He-Man's identity and that the sword is merely a conduit to the powers of Castle Grayskull. In this series, he is vicious and vengeful, but once again survives a brush with death. The Netflix show, Masters of the Universe Revelation, shows Skeletor finally, after all these years, nabbing the power of Grayskull and becoming Skelegod, eliminating Prince Adam. It is a surprising watch, but the story arcs for many of the characters, including Evil Inn, make the show a must-watch. Finally, we have arrived at the newest iteration of Skeletor, the CGI Netflix series, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, in which he is depicted as a full-blooded human and full brother of King Randor, who is eventually disfigured by a curse. While having the look of a kid's show, the first season is a very good watch for anyone looking for a fun adventure story with the greatest of villains. Skeletor has earned his place in popular culture, and despite all these depictions and evolutions over the past 40 years, Skeletor has never changed, and that is a great thing, because what draws us to him is the simplicity. His motivations are clear. He wants the castle, and he wants to defeat He-Man. By doing both those things, he conquers the world. There is no gray with Skeletor. When you look at him, you know he is pure evil and quite possibly the ultimate villain.